So I'm going to be taking y'all through a walk um, of my neighborhood and also the areas outside of my neighborhood um, veering into the Carpinteria Bluffs Preserve um, and then also touching on the end the, uh, the importance of this preserve. So let's get started. So here we are walking through my neighborhood in Carpinteria, California. Um, Carpinteria is located about 10 miles south from Santa Barbara and about 20 miles north of Ventura. So if you hop on the 101 um, and sit in some lovely traffic, I'm sure that you can find your way here. Um, it's a beautiful beach community, um, home to about 13,000 people, I think the last time I checked. Um, and in the past 10 years, the demographics of the community have changed quite a bit. There's a, a massive influx of very wealthy people um, and a lot of interesting management choices have come because of that. So I'm walking down to the beach from my house right now, um, crossing the railroad tracks and over to the right there is the campground. And then over to the left are the Carpinteria Bluffs which I will be walking you guys through. Um, something really interesting that I'm pointing to now is a new housing development, which is going to be two stories, which is pretty unheard of um, in this part of the neighborhood because of coastal access and views. There have been housing and zoning rules forbidding um, second story houses. And so uh, recently, I think within the past two years, a new zoning law passed that people were allowed to build up in certain sections of the neighborhood. Um, so that's been a whole, a whole fight that a lot of people in the community are very focused on. Um, and obviously it comes from a massive point of privilege, but it is still interesting to, to think about, um, and especially in terms of management and accessibility. Um, so I am walking along just the Bluffs Trail. Uh, the beach that we're right by is called Tar Pits, and I wanted to point this out. They have a sign sort of talking about the, the historical relevance of tar and what it's been used for, and obviously we know that tar means oil. Um, and I think when we talk about uh, the Santa Barbara oil spill back in 1969 and just uh, the the importance of oil in our community and in our, you know, capitalist society and all of that, um, we often forget sort of the nitty gritty parts of oil, which is that it, it seeps up and it's everywhere. And I think a really common conversation that people have regarding the beach is that, you know, if, if you go to a beach in Southern California, you're going to walk away with tar on your feet. Um, and so what I'm pointing out right here is, uh, oil and tar seeping up and it happens right in this little downflow and then as you continue along the bluffs there's actually a bunch of uh, tar flows that have hardened and a lot of the sediment that I'm walking on is piled on top of um, big old oil flows. Uh, so it's really interesting to see. It's also really annoying when you walk to the beach and you know you come home and you've got all this gunk on your feet. But when we think about coastal management and the impact that it has had, um, it is certainly interesting to think about the presence of oil and the impact that that has had on management decisions. And then I happened to be down here when people were taking photos, which I think is another important part of maintaining access to public spaces. Um, the beaches are for everyone, they should be, and obviously some of the terrain that I am on right now is, is not accessible. And it is important to think about um, how do we make natural and wild spaces more accessible to those who can't necessarily walk as easily or require assistance, um, because some of this would be really dangerous. And then I also want to point out that a lot of the, the foliage that you're going to see, the very overgrown foliage, uh, thank you rain last year, is actually non-native and invasive. And it's been interesting to see the community around Carpinteria sort of band together in terms of, of really noticeable changes to the environment, like building oil derricks and... and um, very easy to spot 
uh, sort of dangers to the coastal environment, and yet we have all of this non-native plant life surrounding our coastline. Um, and I think it's just important to note. And then I'm walking y'all towards, we're not going to get a very good look at it, but there is an entire um, development company down at the end of the bluffs, which I'm going to zoom in on here. You can see where the boats come in from the oil derrick, so they bring workers in and out. Um, and then there's a whole parking lot, fully paved buildings and everything for the usage and development of oil. And I think it's really interesting that on top of this like beautiful, serene place, um, there is a really intense uh, oil presence. So yeah, that's carp for y'all. Hope you come visit. All right, folks. So now that I've given you a nice overview and a, a sort of visual journey through uh, the Tar Pits Park area, I figured I would show you what it looks like on a map. So I have gone on Google Maps here and just selected Tar Pits. Um, my neighborhood, I'm not going to give you my address, but my neighborhood is the one behind it. Um, and then if we go further up into uh, less coastal areas or like less intensely on the beach, um, you'll see the city of Carpinteria. And then um, there's a big old bluff reserve. And... Um, we're actually kind of sandwiched in between two bluffs reserves. And this is really important because there are a lot of um, really valuable species that exist along our coastline in California. And I think that we have done a really good job of probably understanding that to a level that we didn't before in this class and others. Um, but even in a town like Carpinteria where the locals are very invested in what goes on and when I say very invested I mean very invested it is it it was uh like some of the the uh the social and political bounds of what people believe in go very far and really do impact decisions and friendships that are made um and there's been a big push to increase development in Carpinteria and a lot of locals or people who have lived here for a long time are very uh, against that concept because the whole point of Carpinteria is that it's this small beach community and yes it's a little slow but that's what people love about it and da 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 da. Um, but I do think that it's we have a really unique opportunity here to to see in action what managing natural resources can look like when you have both the privilege and the money to do that and I think carp is a pretty good example because we have a pretty intact coastline um, the houses that are being built are built in regulation with um, you know sea level rise and the like locals are aware of that and the conversation is constantly happening of okay well if this when this happens what do we do um, and I just, I wanted to show you guys overall what CARP looks like. Um, it's not a very developed town. It's not very built up. And that's okay. A lot of people are really happy with that. And I think it's, it's special that it can exist this way. So I hope everyone walks away from this learning a little bit more about Carpinteria. If you've just dro driven through or if you're not familiar at all, um, I think it's a great place to at least visit, to understand and see uh, what a beach community can look like if it has the right resources and obviously that's a big conversation to tackle um, but I am very proud of, of what the majority of the people at least in my neighborhood are discussing in terms of management they are, are, are in general very aware of the issues at hand and trying to either combat them or work with nature so that it is easier so I hope you guys learned something new. Um, I love Carpinteria. I think it's a precious little town. It's a bit slow for my taste, but it's a really beautiful example of uh, coastal management in a very positive light. So thanks for listening.